open vote. Hey guys, it's Blake again. Uh, one of the most frequent questions I get about carving Santa Claus is, is how do I carve the hair on the beards? Um, so today I'm going to take you through that process and just take a little time to talk to you about how I create the depth and the flow uh, using a couple of different gouges uh, when I carve in the Santa Claus beards. Uh, you'll see here how that turns out and how I get some depth and flow in there. So I'll be walking you through that process today and the next time I'll come back in and talk to you about carving in the mustache and the eyes, finish off the ball of the hat and making sure all the details are the way you want them before you paint it. I just want to say thank you all again for following along with this uh, episode of Carving Santa Ornaments. Uh, if you like these videos, like and subscribe my channel. And if you'd like, go ahead and click on that link to buy me a coffee. That'll help the support um, the growth of this channel and allow me to continue to make new videos and upgrade some of the uh, video process and, and the computer. So uh, like and subscribe if you would. And I look forward to making more videos for you in the future. Uh, let me know if you have any questions by sending some comments down the link. Uh, and again, like and subscribe. Thank you all. So we're going to work a little bit more on getting this ornament ready uh, to carve in the details. A few things that I see that we need to take care of. Uh, you're always wanting to look over your carving as you carve it and take care of any issues that you see. Um, right here there you'll see some rough areas where um, the block was originally cut out um, just saw marks I'm gonna go ahead and take those off that really won't matter when it comes to doing details because you end up cutting all that stuff off anyway but just to clean it up just take those off real quick um, these cheek marks here they're very flat from that V-tool, so I'm going to try to round those a little bit. I'm actually going to try to cut a little deeper right in here to create kind of that chubby cheek Santa look. Same thing on the other side. Cut off that ridge. And again, kind of deepen that area right there next to the nose. like that again trying to be aware of symmetry trying to square that nose up just a little bit like that so from here usually what I do I'll go ahead and cut underneath the mustache really deep and take out like a half U or maybe a U cut to create that little bit of an open mouth. So I'm just going to turn it over and you'll see there just take out just a little U there. And again I'm going to try to center that up so it may take a couple of couple of cuts just to make sure that it looks right so that'll be the beginning of the opening for the mouth and then what I'll do is I'll take one of my micro gouges probably like a four millimeter and I'll come back in underneath that and create that bottom lip and the way I do that is just kind of outline that gouge or that um, groove that I cut in. So it leaves a ridge there and that ridge will be the lip. You can see there how I did that.
And again, come back in with my knife and clean that up. And I'll also, there's a groove here that it left. I'll go ahead and knock that down. Leaving that mouth sticking out like that. Okay, now I have, that I have the mouth established, before I do any of the details on the face, we'll go ahead and work on the beard. Um, I try to get a lot of flow in the beard that, uh, or the beards that I carve on my Santa Clauses. And usually what I do is I usually pick a side, one side or the other, to start on, um, knowing that this is the center line. And I'll do S cuts. So I may start over here, come across, and down. Same thing. There, across, and down. Here, across, down. And again, you can see how that's creating that flow. The hair always comes from the side of the face. You gotta make sure that it flows in the right direction. And then when you cut it in, you gotta cut it in with the right direction. The way I cut in hair is I use uh, several different gouges to try to create depth. All right, I think on this episode today, we're going to uh, work a little bit on carving in hair, uh, focusing mostly on the beard and the hair that comes out on the side of the face. Um, the way I accomplish the flow in my beards is to use a, a series of gouges uh, to create S cuts, which will create flow. I think a lot of times new carvers have difficulty in uh, figuring out how to do hair and they ended up or end up just carving it straight down. And when you think about a beard uh, and hair from Santa Claus, it's kind of messy and all over the place. So that's kind of what I want to replicate in carving hair on this guy. So if you look close here, I've already drawn in some S um, curves or S lines on, on where the hair is going to be. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, uh, what they call a soft V. If you can see the profile there. Um, it's got two wings and it's got a U in the bottom and I'm just going to follow those lines starting in the middle of the beard and going down and then I'll turn it over and go up because of the grain uh, direction. So you can see there how I started that. And I turned it over and I'm taking it right up to where the mustache will be. Like that. And then I'll continue to do the same thing. Just cutting in curves. And you can tell I really get in there with this soft V and create some depth. using those wings to kind of chip out some of that on the side there. I'll come in here. And again, create some, some movement and some depth and you'll see it's creating those ridges. And that's really what you want to start out with. You'll notice I'm kind of breaking through some of these areas on the side. I'll come back in and put triangle cuts there and that'll kind of break up the beard a little bit. One of the things I want to point out is how I'm making this cut and how I'll hold this gouge. I'm actually cutting this way. You have quite a bit of control with the gouge when you hold it this way and cut as compared to 
this way and cutting um, you can only take it so far usually you have a good stop in your wrist uh, so it seems to be a safe way to carve especially hair so I'll continue on with uh, this tool cutting in these deep gouge lines coming out from the side of the face and again, nothing is straight, so it's kind of out and down. And you can tell there's really no rhyme or reason as to how I'm carving those. Crossing over some, so you can see there that creates some depth. So people ask, what is one of the most valuable tools in your box? I say it's probably one of these soft V's, especially for a Santa Carver that's carving in hair and beards. You can see there how it's getting some, some depth in that. This particular tool happens to be a Pete Ortel soft V. Uh, it was made by Denny. I think um, Drake has a soft V and you can probably get one from OCCT. Maybe some other manufacturers out there that make them. So you can see there kind of how I'm setting that up. So you'll notice in all of these valleys um, some of the cuts kind of cross over each other um, and usually what I try to do is to make some of those a little deeper uh, and I'm going to deepen some of these cuts so you can see there how deep that got And again, it's all about layering. And creating texture. So I'll use my knife and go back and knock off some of these areas that are kind of broken. Following the contour of the cut. Cutting off some of the rough spots the gouge left behind. So the next thing I'll do is I'll get my micro gouges. I'll probably use about a number five, which is the biggest micro gouge I have. And I'll go back in and I'll add uh, some additional texture to some of those ridges and valleys um, so that I create some interest and make it look a little more irregular. And again, turning it over. And just keep working on that beard.
keeping in mind the flow. So again, I cut in S curves and I want to continue um, kind of that same pattern to keep it from looking straight down. Uh, you don't want the hair to be straight down. You want it to be flowy. And you can see there, uh, just in a short amount of time, you can get some pretty good flow on that hair uh, just with a couple of tools. What I'm doing now is I'm going back around that mouth, setting up that little ridge there for the bottom lip. Just making sure that area is clean. So that, that lip pops out. Then another thing you can do on the beard is you can even cut in some deeper grooves with your knife. And I like to do that, again, just to create some shadow in some areas where I feel like it needs to be deeper, like right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in one way with my knife. I'm going to turn it over, cut back to that cut. And you'll see there how it created that shadow. May do another one over here on this side. And again, like I said in one of the beginning videos, the beginning stages of realism starts with shadows. If you can create those shadow lines with your cuts, then you're accomplishing uh, realism. So you want somebody to pick it up and look at it and think, yeah, that's the way a beard should flow. That's the way shadows would be created uh, if it was real hair. Um, and you accent those shadows with the painting when you come back in and do the painting. I'll do a few on the side. Again, just deeper cuts. Cut it one way, turn it over, cut back to it. And that's usually about all I do with the beards.